Welcome to part four of a six part series on tripods. I know a lot of you out there may be asking questions. So Will, with all these tripods you have, which is your go-to one? That is this one right here. This is the one we're gonna take a look at. When I go out and do run and gun, and I'm gonna grab one to take with me, this is the one I take with me. I can say I've taken this 100% of the time. Now I've not shot with it 100% of the time, but I've always made sure this one is with me. So today we're gonna to take a look at this one and find out why. Okay, so for today, this is the newer tripod. This is the two-in-one. It's a tripod and a motto pod. So looking at it right off the bat, it comes in a nice nylon bag, just like pretty much all of them out there do. But let's get it out of the bag, take a look at it, and see what it looks like, and see what I'm talking about here. Again, this is my one that I take with me all the time. The bag does fit a little tight in this one, so when you get it, it is tight in there. And we'll get its arm out here right too. We'll throw that off to the side. And we'll take a look at this one right here. The arm attaches to the fluid head here. As you can see it, it can go on either side. So when you go to put this on, it's your choice and then it rotates around either way so they have it angled down. This tri tripod right here will hold 26 and a half pounds weight. That is its load that it is capable of. Its weight itself is right up a little over three pounds, right in that range right there. So it's not a heavy tripod for something to take in that much weight. Collapsed right here, 24 inches. It will expand out to 70 inches tall. So this one right here, definitely a good one. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So let's go ahead and take this out of the room here into the other room where we can open this one up and take a really good look at it. Okay, as you can see here, I went ahead and put the handle on right here. And I got it on this side and just tighten it. Like I said, you could go ahead and put it on the opposite side. Once this is loose, this does go ahead and turn around. So you can go ahead and adjust that there. Now let's take a look at the legs right here. These are easy enough because they just pull out and fold down. They've got this little button right here on the top right there. If you can see it, you just push that button into whichever position. It's got a couple of different position settings. You just push the button and it'll lock it in right there. You do it the same to all three. You just lock them in. Bring it right down, lock them right in. And you can come down and lock it right in. So we've got all three locked in right now. So looking at all three legs, all locked in place, ready to go. This is tight here, it's extended up right now. But if you do a little loose in this, it will drop. Let's take a look at the latches right here. Go ahead and release it right there and it lets the, the leg come out right like that. So you can bring it in, lock it, unlock it, let the leg come out right there. Does it all three, it's got three of them there. Go ahead and do the extension up that way. All three work real good. And just set it up that way. So let's go ahead and set it up and take a look at the top of this thing. Okay, looking at the top head mechanisms up here, right here. This little latch right here is what keeps it from moving around. Just loosen that one right there. And she does her nice little pan and tilt right there. And she does it nice and smooth right in through there. That's why it's called a fluid head right there. And this one here, you loosen it on the side over here. You got this little side lever right here. Go ahead and loosen that one there. And you got your pan and tail right there. You can bring it right up. And if you notice, it will return right smooth right back down to where it was. If you don't lock it in place, it will go ahead and tilt the other way too, down. For aiming it up. And then bring it nice and smooth right back up and go ahead and readjust. Now, when I got this one here, I don't know if it is just... I happen to get a lucky one or what, but this one has a nice smooth movement on it. So it's got a nice fluid head right there, nice movement move. Now it's bringing it around to the other side over here. And you've got the little locking mechanism right here that locks the plate on that you go ahead and hook your camera on right here on the side. And one little nice little feature I want to go ahead and show you is it pulls out and you can move it around. So that does turn, pull out, move around, lock back in. So if the camera's in the way, it's a bigger camera sitting in there, this will still pull out and you can pull it and move it around. Now, once you go ahead and release that, release the bar here, you'll notice it won't slide out. Keeps the little safety mechanism so your camera doesn't pop off. Back over to the other side over here. So around, there's a little red button right here. Won't come off till you push the button, then it comes out. So now your little plate is right out. You slide it right back in. Push the button, lock it back in, right there. When you get to where you want it, just bring it around, or the other way there, I'm backwards, and lock it right into place there. Now it does have um, a quarter uh, inch uh, bolt right here. It does come with an eighth or three eighths also. I did take that one off, but I only use the quarter on my cameras right now. So I'm not using that one. 
So as you can see here, it does have a little bubble level to find out if you're level. And we're not level at the moment, but that's okay. So some of the features right there is looking at nice and smooth right there. So we got that right there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this thing at fully extended up right now. Okay, now looking at this thing fully extended here, we're now looking at a total of 70 inches off the ground here. She's fully all the way up. And I have to tell you, I had to back up my other tripod here just to go ahead and be able to see the whole thing all the way up. And she's way up there right there. So, not sure if I've ever needed it that tall. I usually like to keep it right at about my eye height at the most or a little below. But that's what it looks like at full extension up there right now. Okay, one thing I wanted to go ahead and show you is right from this little collar part right here, just loosen it there, and it makes it, you can move it up and down. Right there, and just tighten it back up, locks it into place where it is. Now, one thing that makes this tripod a little bit special is it turns into a monopod. So let's go ahead and change that over right now. Okay, when changing it over, go ahead and tighten it right here at this little back screw back here. Go ahead and tighten that part there so you get a good nice tightens. Or that's just going to keep slowly turning around and around, so you don't want to do that. Tighten that up right there, then go ahead and spin it right off. And how many times will it go around before it pops off? And it comes right off there. We'll go ahead and put that screw right there. It's got a little screw right here to hold it in place right there. Get that back in. And we're going to take this piece off with it. So you want to take this piece and the screw off right there and put them right on there. Now looking at part two, you're looking at the legs. You're going to see two of them are identical. And there is a different one right here. This one is marked with the red and it's got the thing. He turns. Turn him right there unscrews and he pops off right there. So now I'll just go ahead and take this one, lay it down, and we'll get and start working on the next part here. Okay, when making the monopod, you've got the end here with the leg. Go ahead and take the little black disc right here and he puts right down on it. Now, one thing I always recommend is a little screw right here. Put the little small end right here. Go ahead and point that down into it. I usually do a finger tight with it when I go ahead and put it in. And then you use the black thing once you get it started to hold it nice and tight. Won't fall out from that point right there. Next, go ahead and grab the fluid head, set them on, and screw them right in there. Now you can go ahead and use a ball head too. You can attach pretty much any head you want on there at this point here. Now you've got your monopod. So now you can move around with them, get different movement angles. I like using a monopod a lot of times. I'll set it like this, and I'll get some little side movements like this with it. Works really good. You've got all three legs. You can make it whatever height or length you want and it's all pretty much ready there. Can you use your fluid head? Yes, you can. It does work still right here. You can hold it one hand. You can use them for your... His little, pretty much his movement for his side to side, it really doesn't work right here. So it's just going to be the up and down. That's going to be the nice fluid head part. It works with it right there on your monopod. Okay, one little thing I wanted to go ahead and show you before I go ahead and put the, the fluid head back on top of this right here is if you look right there. There's a little set screw that you can see it actually from the bottom. When you're looking at it from the bottom down here, you'll see the little set screw inside it, inside there. What I've had a lot of people complaining about with this kind of tripod and this one here in particular is that when they go ahead and they put the fluid head on there and you turn it one way, when it would be the tightening way, it works good. It's got the nice fluid head, but when it goes to move the other way, I saw a lot of things on the inside the uh, reviews on it where people are saying it's, it's coming undone. It's loosening itself back up again. That little set screw right there, take a little Allen wrench and you tighten it up and it holds the fluid head on there nice and tight. So when you go back the other way, it doesn't do that. So that is one thing to think about when you're working with this tripod here. Okay, one other thing I want to go ahead and mention right here is if you notice I got the legs kicked out on it this time all the way out. They do have three settings when they go and stand out. You saw the first one with them all the way in is their lowest setting in. Then they go to a middle section. This is kicked all the way out. So you can get a nice good little different angle with it right there just like that. So you want some really good stability. You want that thing to hold nice and good. And it's low. It's only about maybe two feet at the most off the ground right now. Okay, one thing I like about this tripod is stability. With these legs out like this, she's not going anywhere. Wind's not going to push it over. Your camera's pretty safe right at that point there. You can also extend the legs out and get a little bit more better base on it. It'll actually raise it up a little bit too. And remember, if that fluid head starts to want to walk on you a little bit and start to move around on you, just take a little Allen wrench, come underneath it and tighten that up, get a nice good tight. And then once you loosen the little uh, pin here right here, it'll go ahead and let it move nice and smooth. Now, another thing I want to go ahead and point out is right underneath here, you're going to see a little hook. 
little bar, metal bar comes down that holds onto there. That's what you can hook some weights onto. I got some sandbags right over there. I can hook that right onto there. So hold on just one second. Let me grab one of those and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I know I've been talking about the sandbags. This is what I'm talking about right here. You can pick them up for right about $15.99 for, uh, for four. Then you have to go ahead and put some weights inside them. I actually put some small little three pound weights, little dumbbell weights inside it instead of sand in it. They work good, gives me a nice six pounds. Just clip that right onto the bottom right underneath this thing. You go ahead and get it out. Lock the two together. If I can get it, I can try to do it with one hand. Lock it together and then it's gonna hold it right there. So when this tripod's up, it's got some nice weight down the center. That's going to keep wind or anything from wanting to pull this thing over and knock it down. So what I like about this one and why this is my running gun one is because it's very versatile. I can do a lot of different things. It packs up real small, real nice, easy to carry around, and I've got it. I've got it as a monopod. I've got it as a tripod. I've got a nice fluid head to give me nice good motion up and down, pan and tilt on it. So do I recommend this one? Yes, this is a very good one to go ahead and get. If you're going to need one that you want to be able to take anywhere, do anything with, this is a good starter right here. Actually, I don't think a lot of the other ones out there, even the more expensive ones, can do all the different things this one does. So I recommend this one very highly. It's one to go ahead and look into if you're looking for a tripod. Now I have gone ahead and put the link down below in the description. And if you want, I'll go ahead and I'll throw some of the sandbags down in there too, right above it. I'll go ahead and show you if you want to go ahead and get some of those for it too. So this completes number four of our series of tripods. Next week, we're going to take one that looks very similar to this one. It's actually my newest tripod that I have just bought here recently, probably within the past six months. But he's very similar to this, but he actually does a lot of a few little different things that this one can't do. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that one next week. So I want to thank you and have a great day.